Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. Today we're going to go over some Backyard Scientist safety tips with the help of Rescue Randy. Let's get started! So we're going to be taking a look at lathes, table saws, and angle grinders and seeing what happens when you don't follow the instructions with the help of Rescue Randy. It looks a little rough. It might look like he's been in a fire and that's because he has been in a fire. Fire! Whoa! Oh, whoa. Yes. We used him on the TV show Street Science on the Science Channel. It's still doing reruns, so check it out on the Science Channel if it's chilling in your area. It was a pretty cool show. Suck it in, Randy. Come on. Too many cheeseburgers. First up, we're going to be taking a look at an angle grinder. It's a very common tool. A lot of people have them in the garage. It has a lot of potential to cause injury if you don't know how to use it or you use it improperly or whatever. Anyway. So uh, the main source of problems comes from this disc here. If it gets caught and jammed up or binded up, it can kind of explode out this direction here. That's why you should always use one of these deflection shields to deflect it away from your your money maker. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna see what happens if all goes wrong with the help of Rescue Randy. Now instead of using a small angle grinder, I'm going to be using the seven inch angle grinder with a big grinding disc on it. I'm gonna try to shoot the grinding disc with my BB gun to make it shatter, and I'm gonna be way over there to make sure I don't get hit by anything. Safety first. Wow, this disc is really tough. I shot it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, and it didn't even go through some of the times. This disc is bulletproof. Oh well, let's keep trying. Honestly, I'm super impressed with these grinding discs. I had to shoot it like 20 or 30 times until it finally broke apart. And I say grinding discs because I have a couple more, so let's try this again. Rescue Randy is one tough son of a gun and so are those safety goggles. Three times in a row and they didn't even break. Anyway, I know that it looks like I'm not using a backstop when I'm shooting my BB gun, but don't worry, I'm off to an angle, so the garage wall is my backstop. So yeah, that's why you always keep your angle grinder guard on and in the right position. Not like this where it can hit you in the face, but more something like this. So if it explodes, it doesn't hit you in the face. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next experiment. For our next safety tip, we're going to be talking about wire brushes on the angle grinder. And this is safer than a grinding disc, sure. The thing about these, though, is they can throw these little wire bristles on the end of it really fast. And I've had one like an inch long in bed, a half inch into my skin, and I didn't even feel it go in. So definitely have to wear safety goggles when using the wire brushes. And uh, be careful about clothing because it can really latch onto clothing and tear it up. I guess I should also mention before I tear the shirt up that I have a uh, holiday edition of Backyard Scientist t-shirts available on the shop, so go check it out. We're just going to pretend like we're grinding on something on the bench and then it's going to kick back and hit him in the shirt and let's see what happens. Woo! Look at his crop top! He's <laughs> been working out, he's trying to show off his abs, but yeah, that would hurt a lot if uh, if, that, skin. if you had skin. Look how fast it just gets tangled right up in the shirt and gets thrown all around there. I mean, there's really no way to prevent this except for just don't get your shirt tangled in the angle grinder. Maybe a thick denim jacket would help, or maybe I should just use a different type of brush. I'm just scared it's going to come back and hit me. Take two. Here we go. Yep. There we go. Yeah, that didn't help much either. That type of brush still got wrapped up. It looks painful, but I still wouldn't say that it's a serious injury, at least not compared to the next experiment. Now we're going to be talking about the dangers of a table saw, and there's two main dangers here. Obviously, number one is the blade. You do not want to stick your finger in the blade because it'll get chopped off. Don't put your hands anywhere near here. That's why you use a push stick to push the wood 
through the saw without having to get your hands anywhere near the blade. The other thing you have to worry about is called a kickback, and that's what happens when you're cutting a piece of wood and it gets jammed up against the side of the saw blade, and it kicks it back at you at a very high rate of speed. Let me show you what a simulation of a kickback could look like. That looked like it hurt. I know it doesn't look like much on camera, but this thing can launch a piece of wood with some serious force. Let's see how far it can throw a 2 by 4 That's probably farther than I can throw it. No, I mean, I'm kind of <laughs> impressed how far you threw it. I I was really impressed with how far it launched that 2x4, so I wanted to take advantage of the table saw launcher and build something out of it. So this is what I built right here. It is a launcher that is made out of a PVC pipe, duct tape, and a piece of wood clamped to the saw. And basically the saw blade is in here in the middle of it, and I'm going to take this dowel, load it on in here, it'll send it flying through all the way over here, and hopefully it'll go all the way through the watermelon. You think it'll go all the way through? I definitely think it's going to go all the way through. It might not though, because... I don't know if you can see this, but I made this dowel into a hollow point. And Tauf Later Mouse, if you're watching, please shoot one of these out of a shotgun. I'd love to see it. All right, here we go. Wow. I was really surprised with how fast that thing came out, and the distance between the barrel and the watermelon is 4 feet and 8 inches, and I calculated it, and it is 98 miles an hour coming out of there. Not only did it go clean through the watermelon, that's where it went in, and that's where it came out, but it also totally knocked over our backboard, which is this big piece of sheet metal. Whoa. Oh. And it put a pretty serious dent in it right there. Right, now I sharpened this end of the stick and I'm gonna see if it can go through the sheet metal. Probably not, but worth a try. Oh! This is where we found it, probably a good 50 feet away from the, the saw and it's, wow. It was in there pretty good. Oh, it got in there pretty deep. Yeah. So that's where I fed it in, and you can see it going through, and then you can see it chop, 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 chop. Whew. That was scary. I didn't think it would go through, honestly. The first time it was pretty dull, but this time it's sharp, and yeah, a 2x4 uh, a is pretty bad for a kickback, but imagine cutting something that's sharp on the other end or it breaks, and that could become a real projectile and probably go right through you if the circumstances were right on the table saw. Well, I think Randy wants to take a break from showing us how to stay safe from power tools, and while he's resting, we can talk about how to stay safe from computers. I mean, on the computer. When I was in middle school, I got in trouble for hacking the school's privacy content filter. And by hacking the program, I mean I read the help manual, which said the default username and password for the admin account were admin and password, which were never changed. Then I was able to watch all the videos on eBombs World and play all the addictinggames.com games instead of doing my computer lab work. Unfortunately, I didn't know that I disabled the entire school's content filter, and they were able to track me down because I was logged on to my account when I did it. Rookie mistake. Now that I'm older and hopefully a little bit more wiser than I was when I was in middle school, I would use a VPN like NordVPN to bypass the content filter so I could do whatever I wanted. NordVPN is a VPN service, and if you go to nordvpn.com backyard and enter the link down below in the description, you get 75% off a three-year plan. And to put it simply, a VPN basically encrypts all the data that is sent from your computer so nobody can actually see what you're doing downstream. And because the content filters can't see the data that your computer is sending, it can't block it. Not only can NordVPN bypass the content filters in schools, apartments, and hotels, it can also bypass entire countrywide filters like in China. 
Anyway, everybody wants to spy on you these days, and you should definitely use a VPN as at least the bare minimum as a protection when you're going online, especially if you're on an open Wi-Fi network, because it's just so easy for a hacker to route all of your information through their computer and see everything that you're typing in and sending online. And there's also private companies that monitor all the peer-to-peer -peer websites, and if you download the wrong thing, they will track you down with the help from your ISP, who is also spying on you. And of course we know that the NSA is trying to collect everybody's online information, but all of this can be stopped by using a VPN to encrypt your web traffic. So moral of the story, if you want privacy, you want a VPN. Go to nordvpn.com backyard and use the code backyard to get 75% off a three year plan plus an extra month for free. Protect yourself online today. And if you don't care about privacy or you think you have nothing to hide, just go ahead and type in all of your usernames and passwords and social security number and street address while you're at it. Just put it all down there in the comments section. Wait, where'd Randy go? Randy, no! Randy forgot the most important thing about working with the lane, and that's don't wear anything that can get caught in it, like no ties. If you have a tie, tuck it into your shirt. If you have long hair, tie it up and tie it back or else you will get sucked right into the lane. Let me show you what could happen. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, that didn't look too bad, but that's because Randy was tied into his seat. Now, if it was you, remember that this tie is wrapped around your neck and you're going to be pulled into the lathe with all these spinning metal bits and you do not want that to happen. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you. Just when you thought an angle grinder couldn't get any more dangerous, this happened. This is what happens when you bet an engineer that you couldn't make an angle grinder any more dangerous than it already is. And it's basically a chainsaw attachment for your angle grinder. Randy, can you lend us a hand and show us how dangerous this can be? I was kind of scared that would happen because he's like a really soft rubber and I think it wants to kick back a lot. So we're just going to test on this fruit instead. All right. Uh, I think you're in the splash zone, Randy. I think you're in the splash I zone too. I think I'm in the splash zone. I'm going to be so sticky from that. Oh, poor Randy. Well, let's have a round of applause for Randy for putting up with all this, and thank you guys for watching these videos. See you next time. Bye.